Hello, dear friend! This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. Harvest of Light, the study of the book Seifa de Luz in Portuguese, in English. It's translated as Harvest of Light. The book is not yet published in English, but hopefully it will. For now, we're sharing with you the free translation that we have been putting together, and it's on the revision. We have a team working on this at Kardec Radio while we can share this with you. And why is this book of the essence? Because it brings to us, as Emmanuel says in the practice, it brings to us the need for more enlightenment. As he says, Lord, please bless us and extend to us your compassionate hands in your infinite goodness so we can perceive in spirit the reality of our tasks and experiences of each day, today and always. Why is it essential? Because often we are not doing what we have to do. No, no. How do we know? All the accounts of the good spirits tell us, especially in the books through the mediums, under um, Chico Xavier and Divaldo Franco, that usually we do not fulfill our to-do list in an incarnation. Are you surprised? Don't be. If we follow through this thing, and I say think, quote-unquote, this wonderful book, we will, we will align ourselves. If you pay attention to people in the streets, at work, anywhere else, you'll be lost. Because most often people are just sleeping. Robert the Rop, the biologist who studied deeply the mechanisms of the body, started in opening his consciousness that the beauty and the perfection of the body did not stay there only. It is just a mere reflex of the divine. He identified that we have different levels of consciousness and majority of people on earth are in the sleep state and they don't want to be awake. And they become very upset with us when we want to wake them or when we are awaked. It bothers them. So, majority of people want to sleep, eat, have sex, and that's it. They, even hygiene for them is not necessary. Work for them is not necessary, and that's for majority of people on earth. That's how they feel. When we go another level, we start the dream state. We dream about it. So we awake, and then we go back to sleep. It's the case of many people. They listen to a talk like, oh my gosh, I want now to help so many people. They go home, and they go back to the sleep again. They wake up, like they watch a seminar. Oh my gosh, I really want to embrace the world. And they do, the next day, they are back to that sleeping state. Until one day, we will reach the ultimate, the cosmic consciousness, when we never sleep again. And that's the case of Mother Teresa. Gandhi, Divaldo Franco, Chico Xavier, Dalai Lama, etc. Those, and Jesus of course is above and beyond this, but it's for us the reference of people who never sleep in their consciousness. Where do you think you are? Why are we asking this? Because today, chapter 39 of the book, Safer de Luz, Harvest of Light, we're studying chapter 39. Personal commitment. Right, Rudy? Back on track. Here we are. 
And today we were in the Spiritist group of DC and we had an opportunity to share with people insights that are in the book Action and Reaction when we learn about the strategies of darkness that try to derail us from our personal commitment. Oh yes, and they come exactly to our weak points. That's why we need to stay firm inside of ourselves. Stay put in spite of what people think about it. Okay? It's vital, 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 vital. Personal commitment. Are you ready, friends? Yes? Let us read it and then we're going we're gonna to share more, okay? I planted the seed. Emmanuel quotes from Paul to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I planted, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. Then Emmanuel explains to us in as few as seven paragraphs. Seven. He begins, no dissolving personalism in the cultivation of the spirit. As it takes place in any terrestrial field, any cultivator in the soil of the soul can boast of doing everything in the fields of sowing or harvesting. After the effort of those who plant, there are those who water the spring plant, who helps it, who corrects it, who protects it. Thinking, however, of the imposition of decentralization in the spiritual service, many companions avoid initiating the moral constructions that is up to us. Many of them invited to uplifting commitments in this or that sector of work claim to be unfit for the task, as if we should never begin learning self-improvement, while others assert, almost always with irony, that they were not born for leading. Those who do so tend to relegate to God little obligations in regard to elevation, progress, enhancement, or improvement. But the laws of the Creator do not exempt the individual from the duty of collaborating in the edification of the good and the truth in favor of themselves. Let us look at the word of the Apostle Paul when he already knew the problems of self-improvement when referring to the dissemination of the gospel. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. The need for individual devotion to the cause of the truth transpires clearly of similar conceptualization. We know that the essence of all activity in the agricultural tillage originally proceeds from divine providence. From God comes the seed, the soil, the climate, the sap, the orientation to the development of the tree. But it also comes from God, the intelligence, the health, the courage, the discernment of the cultivator, but we are obliged to recognize that one must plant. Pause for a second. Let's go to the original, Paul to the Corinthians, right? When we go to chapter 3, he quotes verse 6. But the whole chapter 3 is about his orientations. And we can read some more of it in the book Paul and Stephen because he refers to this very passage there as well. But here, 
let's go back to the biblical passage. In chapter 3, it's about guidance to those who are coordinating the churches, the Christian churches. And he begins by saying, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You're still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not merely human beings? What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants. Through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has me making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. But the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, when th though only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your minds? Pause. Let's pause. Welcome, everyone. Let's go back to Emmanuel. So Emmanuel is bringing to us the title, Personal Commitment. What is your personal commitment with God? Oh, Vanessa, I have a family. I have my job. Oh, I have... No, 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 no. We're talking about things that are everlasting. Oh, but my family... No, but your family, when you discarnate, you may stay connected, but you learn with Andre Luis and his mother in the book No Solar that if we haven't transformed those ties in spiritual ties, the roles change. Andre Luis' mother said, clear cut. I understand you're still calling me mother, but remember, André, that has ended there. And she's not dismissing herself of her loving bond with André Luis. She's just saying, open, expand your vision and see myself beyond the limited role of a mother, though sublime. We'll will never be mothers or fathers, brothers and sisters in the blood ties for eternity of that person. It will change. So what is our personal commitment? Rudy is saying, let's read chapter 3, Cooperation of Books Out and Life. Thank you, Rudy. So what is our personal commitment? With whom? No, it's not a whom. It's God. 
do you have a personal commitment with God? Do we? So that's the exercise, huh? Take a pen, piece of pen, paper, pen, and write down. My personal commitment with God. Write it down like this. And in the next 24 hours, that's our exercise. One, two, three, or it can be a paragraph. How did you feel about it? Can we elaborate on it? What is it? I have here Kara Correa with us. Thank God. Kara, what do you think? You want to say hi? Hi, everyone. <laughs> But when you think about this personal commitment with God, Carol, can you help us clarify what Emmanuel is pointing out? We are all here to serve, to love, and to learn with God first and foremost, because God is the provider of everything, and with each other. Hence the need for cooperation. We are here in the book thought and life, Emmanuel also reminds us of that, that we are co-pilots with God. God is the ultimate pilot of our lives. When we think we are in control, we are not. God is. But we are here to co-create with God. So I have to examine myself in terms of my feelings, mm -hmm. my vibrations, mm -hmm. my thoughts and my actions to understand how much I am willing to give of myself to God and say, God, like Paul did, what would you like me to do? Because you are the ultimate Lord and I am your servant. So what would you like me to do? That is my personal commitment as a child of God to learn to ask God in every moment of every day that God grants me in this reincarnation. God, what would you like me to do? And then have the courage and the hope and the joy as Jesus recommended to follow through. Yes, to sir. stay awake. <laughs> And not Stay awake. to make God's priorities my priority. Thank you, Carol. And that also means something that we're going to remind. If you didn't have a chance to watch the explanation we gave today when we were the Spiritist Group in D.C. before the spiritual treatment on the strategies of the darkness, Please go there and watch this talk. It's in the Facebook of Kardec Radio. Because there, we recap the strategies of the darkness, trying to derail us from fulfilling this personal commitment. And we're not blaming them. Because both Andrea Lewis in the book Action and Reaction, and Manuel Filomeno de Miranda in a book that is yet to be translated, Trilhas da Libertação, remind us that they can only incite something that is already in there. It's like the brain. If I don't have a receptor, you can swallow any molecule. The, the, it's not going to bind. It's not going to trigger a cascade of events. So for us, we need to go there and change those outlets inside of us. And they, they summarize. It's about our central desire. And Manuel Filho de Miranda de Miranga comes and reminds us. It's in the theme of sex, narcissism, which is talked about right here in this message. Power and money. And it happens even though we may not be in a super powerful. 
sou Emmanuel, his first sentence, he titles Personal Commitment and the First Sentence. No dissolving personalism in the cultivation of the in the cult no dissolving personalism. What is personalism? In other words, ego. But ego is not bad. The problem is when I put myself as the center of the universe. And I have, for example, a gathering. And I cannot. I have friends together, okay? And I'm constantly looking at people like children do. You know, children are like this. They look at others and they compare to themselves. Oh, I don't have that watch. Oh, I don't have this. Oh, look at you. And that's very childish. And there are people, majority of people on earth, who are just like children. They are not capable of being amongst people without comparing themselves all the time to others. And they see those who have great achievements, they're like, oh, how come I didn't have that idea? Oh my gosh. No, that idea must be bad because it didn't come from me. And that's when he says, dissolving personalism. What does that mean? In the cultivation of the spirit, if I put myself in the center of my universe instead of God, I dissolve the virtues that are to come. Because I'm not able to feel what they're feeling. It's the practice of looking at people like as if we're looking at somebody whom we love very much. When we love someone dearly, like when a mother loves their child for real or a father, they look at them, they, that person, that child can have the world and they may have nothing, but they feel complete seeing that person striving. But when I put myself in the center of the universe, and not God, I look at anybody, even our children, and I compete with them. I'm not capable of feeling happy because of their happiness. I have to dispute, to compete, instead of collaborate. I'm not able to even talk good things. And there are people who are so malicious and hypocritical that they, they do something like this. Oh yeah, I know that person is a very good person, but you know, let me tell you something. And then we start the other list of the not so good people things. So Emmanuel is saying, we as the cultivators, we have everything that we need. And he says, after the effort of those who plant, there are those who water, who plant, who correct, who protect it. And in the spiritist movement, the same happens. There are people who came before us. Now we're here. There will be more people coming in. And then Paul of Tarsus says in chapter 3 to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. It doesn't matter if it was Paul or Apollos or anybody else. What matters is that God did it. Through Paul, through Apollos. So we owe everything to God. I remember Divaldo Franco once saying, 
that he was giving a lecture. And a woman stood up and said, Divaldo, I love you. He went home that night and felt, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong. Because I'm talking about the gospel. And instead of people loving the message, they are loving me. And that's an ancient movement of the soul. How can I disappear in the message? How can I dissolve myself in the message so the message stays center stage? God stays center stage. And after all, we feel more love for God not for those who are delivering the message. We may be grateful, but our love is to God. Why? You think this is radical? No, 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 no. He says, intelligence comes from God. All oh, that person is intelligent. Intelligence come, came from God. Health, beauty, and discernment. Well, what then do we do? It's on us to plant. And what is planting? It requires will, huh? the drive of the will, and effort. Will is on us. God's not going to push us. Say, go. He says, you want to go? I already gave you breath. Go if you want to go. You don't want to go, stay. But, you know, take the consequences. No wonder in the book Thought and Life, Emmanuel in 1958 told us that will is a driving force of the soul. Also quoting from Andre Lewis and Kardec. In the book Genesis, on us, it's about will. But you know the problem of people? They don't believe they have to do it. They say, me, and they look. It's like somebody saying, you, come here, come here. You're like, me? Me or Carol or you're calling Jesus? No, no, you. Me? No, no, but I can't do this. No, you don't know me. No, but God is calling you. It's the message from the message from the book Jesus in the Home. In the book Jesus in the Home, the spirit in you, Lucio Tushiko Xavier, tells us the story of people who were prepared to help others. They read the scriptures, they knew it all. So the angels had a problem in the neighboring city. Everybody was sick. So they came and said, can you help? And they said, no, I can't stop studying these books. No, 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 this is priority. And I cannot go there. Those people are dangerous. And they're sick. I'm going to be sick. No, not me. And they kept asking all the people in the temple who were very devoted to the studies of the teachings and praying. They couldn't find anybody. So what did they do? They heard the prayers of a criminal who wanted to reform himself, to transform himself. And then he came and said, you want to change? We need your help. We need you to go to the neighboring city, bring them remedy, take care of the people. We'll be with you. For days, the higher spirits, the angels, said Jesus, were mingling with that person, using that former criminal, the ex-con, to help those people who are sick. And then Jesus ends the story by saying, while the ones who think they're clean and pure because they're studying the teachings, they do not have the company of the angels. While the, the one who was a criminal, without the study but the willingness to help, he 
he had the company of the angels because he was volunteering to serve. For you and I, it's not enough to know this. We need to roll the sleeves and share. He says here, we need more people. And we were talking today with several friends who were with us in D.C. We need to expand the services. But we need people to volunteer to do it. We cannot centralize the inner person. We need to spread out. Kardec Radio, the magazine. We need more people. But me, yes, you. And they say, I'm not going to do it because I'm not fit for the task, Emilio says. Or I'm not born to lead. Or it's not for me. And Emilio says, but... You need to do it. But it depends on your will. Right, Carol? Right. It's not up to us to decide what we are supposed to do. That's God's will for us. So this is why Jesus in the Lord's Prayer said, May your will be done. He didn't say, May our will be done. He said, May God's will for us be done. So his, He, the Master, is putting himself in the position of service. So who are we not to do the same, right? Put ourselves in the position of service and be willing to follow God's will for us. It's not about our choices per se, but it's about aligning with God's loving will for us. Exactly, Carol. And as Rudy is saying, Jesus is passing by. How do we know Jesus is passing by? Because of the invitation, right, Rudy? Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. And what happens? And when he comes, everything, everything is fine. fine. Sadness is, is gone and happiness arrives. And when he comes, everything is fine. Sadness is gone and happiness arrives. Jesus is passing by. Dun, 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 dun. Right? right? Jesus is passing by. And and it could be an opera. Can you imagine? <laughs> by. <laughs> and when he comes. <laughs> I wish. Huh? I don't want to bring Oh, God the gosh. Look at that, Carol. <laughs> Say it. Bye. And then we were going to wake we up. Break the yeah, we break the <laughs> windows. <laughs> so that's what it is. Emmanuel is quoting from Paul to the Corinthians. And Paul, we love Paul because he was clear cut saying, Who cares who planted? Who watered it? It was God at the end of the day, for God's sakes. Please stop it. And do what you have to do and stop this quarreling. I did first. I did second. Blah, blah, blah. Because he says it's selfish and it's childish. What matters is that we plant. So, homework, huh? Sing. Jesus is passing by. Number one. Don't break the windows. Number Don't break two. the windows. But in the shower, it works. Yes, Washing the dishes, it's safe. <laughs> Right? Sure. Thank you, John Do Rosa. We can practice with you. Yes, our right? friend. Yes. So, the exercise, my personal commitment with God. What is my personal commitment with God? Hmm? What is it? You need to know. Am I planting? Am I sowing? What should I sow? Immortal conquests. I'm going to do the exercise. We will right there. We will, for sure. Hopefully, we will be guided by the good spirits to clarify things we haven't done. If I discarnate today, Mamma Mia, have I done everything that I had to do? Right? Dulce is saying, I always do my best to go to education in, to go to education, Canada, but we were so 
Okay, Dulcia, I think you're probably talking to somebody else. That's okay. So, friends, today it's about our personal commitment. It's serious and it's grave. You think it's enough? No, Emmanuel is a good educator. Don't think it's enough. Because tomorrow, in chapter 40, he's going to talk about... Our tasks, duties. <laughs> so he is helping us outline it all. And he again quotes Paul in 1 Corinthians, verse 12, chapter 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one according to a useful purpose, for a useful purpose. Each individuality encounters in a reincarnation the chart of potential values of work. Ah, so he's going to help us outline a little more our personal commitment. Do we want to discarnate and find out that we haven't fulfilled our duties? No. We've been there, done that many lives, and we cried. That's why in this life we still feel that guilt and emptiness inside. But let us pray to God that in this life, as he said in the preface of this book, and I will read the last sentence, please, Lord, bless us and extend your compassionate hands in your infinite goodness so we can perceive in our spirit the reality of our tasks and the experiences of each day today and always. We don't want to miss the boat. That's the bottom line. And Jesus is passing by. Who is coming with him? Who is coming with his team? We are. So let us have a beautiful day or a beautiful night and come back for the next chapter of Harvest of Light. Right? Right. After all, Jesus is passing, passing by. Bye-bye. Bye, friends.